In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how you can create visuals similar to the ones Weirdcore makes for Aphex Twins live shows using Ableton Live. This is just a short introduction, if you want to jump straight to the start of the tutorial, just skip ahead to the next chapter. I'm going to be using some software called Zwobot, which is a suite of Max for Live devices that you can use to create visuals for your music inside of Ableton. If you'd like to buy it, there's a link in the description. I'm not going to be going into how to use Zwobot in this video and what all the modules do and how they work, but I do have a series of tutorials that goes into all that. So if you want to watch tutorials on how Zwobot works and what all the different modules do, you can watch that playlist. I'll put a link in the top right corner of the video now. The purpose of this video isn't to exactly replicate what Weirdcore and Aphex Twin have already done. It's just to provide you with some inspiration and places to start if you want to create your own visuals that have a similar aesthetic. So I'm not going to be recreating the visuals exactly, but this gives you a good place to start if you want to do something similar. So the effects that I'm going to look at in this video is this one here. So this is a clip taken from Aphex Twins Warehouse Project show in Manchester in 2017. If you want to watch the full show, there's a link in the description. The camera is on the audience and Weirdcore is adding this kind of flow effect and we've also got these pixelated colors. So I'm gonna look at how we can do something like that in Zwobot. So I'm just gonna stop that video and switch my video fader over to deck A. So here I've got a video of just different people's faces and I have got that synced to my master BPM and it's jumping to a random frame every quarter note. So that's why it's jumping around like this. My BPM for this project is 150. And I've also got the speed on the actual video turned right up. So I'm gonna be using five Zwobot devices and I've grouped them all into this effects rack because I needed a way to have lots of different settings change with a single click, which is why I've grouped them into this audio effects rack and then I've mapped certain parameters to macros and created macro variations, which allows you to change multiple settings across multiple devices with a single click. But I'll come back to that in a second. First, we're just gonna look at each of these devices individually. I've got this flow device, so if I just switch that on, that is creating the main flow effect. I've got a blend mode here, set to difference. And I've got the strength and brightness mapped to these macros here. So flow strength and flow brightness are mapped there because I want those two settings to change when I switch on these other devices. I've got the density turned right up. The waves setting has a beat control on it. So that is changing in accordance with my master beat control, which is set to half notes. So basically it's synced to the BPM. This flow adjust is set to auto. So that's changing automatically. I've also turned on this flow dynamics setting. I do have a whole video dedicated to this module, so I will link to that now if you want to learn more about this specific device. So that's at the top of my signal chain, oh sorry, it's the second in my signal chain. On top of that, I've got this mosh module, which creates a data mosh effect. So I'll turn the flow off just so we can see a bit more of what that's doing. I've got it set to this pin blend mode. I've got the data mosh effects switched right up. The trail strength is turned down at the moment, but I've got that mapped to a macro over here because that's gonna turn up with the second effect that I'm using. So for this part it's turned down, but that is gonna come up later. The speed I've just got right up. Flow adjust, similar to the flow adjust on the flow module. I've got that set to auto. Quality is still at the default setting. The waves is responding to the lower frequencies of the track. So that's got some audio responsiveness on it. If you want to learn more about audio responsiveness in 
his wheelbar. I've got a separate video on that, so watch that. So I'll turn the audio on here at this point. So this track is by an artist called Bloke, and the track is called Interfacing with Musical Cartoons. If you like Aphex Twin, it's very similar kind of vibes to that. So I'll just unmute this. I'll put a link to this EP in the description, and I'll also put a link to the record label's Bandcamp, which it was released on. It's a record label called Machine Records. So, we've got this waves set in, responding to the lower frequencies. The brightness, I've also got mapped to a macro over here. So currently that's set to this, but that's going to change later on. And the FX attractor, I've got set to W or white. So this is the first part of the effect. Before those coloured pixels come into play, we've got this blow effect. Now I've also got these three other modules here, and I've set the device on and off switch for all of those two macros here because this first macro variation is basically setting everything we've got now so it's switching all of these off and it's setting the strength brightness trail strength and mosh brightness to these particular settings because what I want to do with this second variation if I turn that on so what that's done now is it's switched all three of these devices on. So you can see I've mapped, like I said, I've mapped these device on buttons to here. So they're all now switched on. And it's changed the brightness of the mosh and flow effects, as well as the trail strength and the strength of the flow. And it also turned off those blend modes. So I had blend modes on this variation. You can see I've also mapped those blend modes here. So the flow blend mode is mapped to here, the mosh blend mode is mapped to here. Flow in this first variation is set to difference, mosh is set to pin, but on variation 2 I want those blend modes switched off, so they're both changing there. So here I have got this V audio module, so I'll just turn everything off so we can see what that is doing. So that is doing this, just creates a bunch of those kind of pixelated squares and I've got it set to the colour mode, which is why it's colours. Speed is turned all the way up, the density is changing again in accordance with my master beat control over here. And I've got the amp turned all the way up, which is making it more responsive to the audio. You'll see if I turn it down it becomes less responsive. On top of that, I've got this Color Duo module, so I'll just switch that on. I'm just doing that because I want to make it green. So it's creating these green squares, and then on top of that, I've got a Blender module because I don't want the full screen to be taken up with this, I just want it to be over the black parts of the screen. So to create that effect, I'm using this Blender module. And I've got this black screen key in mode on and the correction is turned right up. What that's doing is setting these modules to only appear on top of anything that's black in the original video. So we're still seeing the people's faces. And then we've also got our mosh and flow effects on top of it. So this second variation, I just turned the strength and brightness of the flow down turned off the blend modes on both of them like I said and I turned up the trail strength on the data mosh effect and also changed the brightness so you get this effect and you can use this variation button to switch between the two effects there's quite a lot of variation you can have with this to sort of do your own thing with it so with this first variation you could have more of the mosh trail effect instead of the flow trail so if you want it to be a bit more glitchy and pixelated, you could turn that setting up. Or if you want it to be smoother, turn it all the way down and just use the flow. You can play about with the blend modes.
you can play about with the brightness as well. And same thing with the second variation. With this colour, obviously I've got it set to green here, but with this module, I can change it to whatever colour I want. And if you wanted to change, you could drop in an LFO. And I could map this to here. Colors gonna change with this LFO. So if I set it to random, and if I want this to be less, I want less of the flow effect, and I want it to be a bit clearer and more pixelated, I can just turn that flow right down and use the mosh effect instead. You can use this flow effect as kind of an accent, so you can have that go up on certain parts. And yeah, that's pretty much it. If you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and I will be back with another Zorobot video soon.